Welcome back. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about the pagan origins of the Olympics. Okay, and this will be the the ancient, the recent modern, and the present times. Okay, um, term Olympic itself originates from Olympus or Olympos, a Greek god, as well as the mythical location of the twelve Greek gods. A six hundred foot foot race was the only athletic event at the first Olympics a festival held in 776 BC and dedicated to Zeus the chief Greek god and Zeus is actually the same as Baal through the influence of the Arameans who borrowed the Babylonian pronunciation Bel the god ultimately became known as the Greek Belos identified with Zeus so as we go through this, keep in mind and remember, Zeus and is Baal, okay? And I'm probably going to be pointing that out. Exodus 20, verse 1 through 3, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay, that's the first of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Isaiah 42, verse 8. I am the Lord. That is my name. In my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Okay? In, um, in the ancient Greece... They had in this temple this huge, giant statue, graven image of Baal. I mean, Zeus. And uh, we're going to find here that in the Olympics, they had to swear an oath to Zeus, and they sing a hymn, and they do all this stuff. It's all part of it still in this modern version that we have that everybody loves to tune into. They just don't announce it to you. They don't come on and say, now it's time for the Baal Festival, you know. Greeks gathered every four years in Olympia to honor Zeus through sports, sacrifices, and hymns. The five-day festival brought the Greek world together in devotion to one deity. Hmm, interesting. little one-world foreshadowing. The ancient Greeks believed in dozens and dozens of gods, but the greatest of all of them was Olympian Zeus. So he, in his power, could strike with lightning bolts. He could uphold the idea of justice among men, a worthy god to whom to dedicate your finest energies in Olympic competition. Okay, what was the opening ceremony like? It was just as spectacular as it is today, the athletes filing into the temple where they had to give their oath before a terrifying statue of Zeus wielding these thunderbolts. They had to swear over this bloody slice of boar's flesh that they would obey the rules of the game and use no unfair means to gain victory. There's so much there, it could be a whole show about just the ancient ones and this. There was a lot of sexual fornication and sin and um, bloody sacrifices and all the sports they did naked okay there's a lot there to talk about but we're gonna fast forward into a little more recent history now the games uh, at some point they were banned um, in Greece but uh, they were brought back by a French Jesuit named Baron Pierre de Coubertin and people have said he's a Freemason. I cannot find the verifying information that he actually was a Freemason. I found what says his grandfather was a Freemason. And he was influenced, you know. But I just can't find the solid fact that he actually was a Freemason. I know he was a Jesuit trained man. And he went and visited Pope Pius X. And Pope Pius X encouraged and put his little blessing on this new revived Olympic Games and really Catholic Church pushed this forward quite a bit and uh, I'm going to explain a little bit of the success there. So Baron Pierre de Coubertin 
was the father of the International Olympic Committee. That's that's messed up. <laughs> okay, it's that's true. I just had to go and look something up and verify because I thought this is too sick for this to be literal. But this is true, okay? Baron de Baron Pierre de Cobartin, okay, this Jesuit guy. He, he requested that his heart be buried in Olympia. His heart, after he died, they took his heart out and transported it and buried it in Olympia. Yeah. So this guy is a sick puppy. He's got a little issue with the Olympics, with the spirit of Olympia. Yeah. I thought this was like a metaphor. But they really, they took his heart out and buried it in Olympia. He's buried in France. He's a French guy, you know. Okay. Baron Pierre de Coubertin revived the pagan spirit of the games in 1892. He was the father of the International Olympic Committee. Baron de Coubertin so loved the religion of the games that his heart was buried in the Temple of Apollo in Olympia. To Cobertine, the Olympian athlete was himself a god. In an 1892 proposal of the revival of the games, Cobertine said, the first essential characteristic of the Olympics, both ancient as well as modern, is to be a religion. It represents, above and outside the churches, humanity's superior religion. Okay, so this man was an out-and-out -out occultist. He believed in humanism. He invented what we're going to go on and read. He invented something called Olympism. That's his little vision, his little religion that he coined. De Coubertin borrowed ceremonies, hymns, and rituals from the ancient festival to shape a transcendent Olympism, uniting all athletes. Some scholars today refer to his creation as a, quote, civil religion. The civil religion was not so much the worship or devotion to the state as it is now understood, explained Joseph Price, a professor of religion at White Ear College. Devotion was to the civitas, the human group that transcended a particular religion. Okay, so this is this one world, esoteric, Masonic, united religion that's going to transcend and evolve all you know all mankind into one big antichrist <clears throat> worshiping religion and you know so they worship Baal goes all the way back it's going to go all the way forward to the end too with the antichrist you can say what you want that's what the holy bible tells there will be a one world religion there will be a one world government um and this, okay, now's a good time to talk about with this man. He brought together this flag idea with the, with the five rings, and he, and he codified this symbol. The five rings basically represents all the different regions of the world that, that participate in the games, and then they link together. So it's unity, it's one world government, one world unity, one world religion, and all that. Olympism. And this is what he signified with his symbol. At the opening ceremonies, the Olympic flag is raised while the Olympic hymn is played. The torch relay arrives and the flame is lit. The Olympic oath is also set. And okay, so um, the pregame ceremony is held at the original temple of Hera. You know, why not just go to the pagan site, you know, and just go all out? I mean, just bail it up. Um, it features the lighting of the cauldron's eternal flame by 11 women representing Vestal Virgins with the rays of the sun. They use this parabolic mirror to focus the rays of the sun and start the flame. And this is all symbolic of Lucifer. I'm going to show you why here. The flames carried on, torch relay kept burning throughout the games, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the, the flame was in honor of the theft from the gods of fire by the Greek god Prometheus. Okay, Prometheus always represents Lucifer. It's representing Lucifer bringing enlightenment, sin, into the world. 
the bearer of light, the Masons, you know, the light bearer, they call Lucifer. Prometheus snuck up to Mount Olympus, lit a torch from the sun, and hid a burning piece of charcoal in a hollow stock. Zeus punished Prometheus by chaining him to a rock or pillar. So there's a part of the pagan stuff. I mean, you know, they're not hiding the pagan origins of all this stuff. Just, just, they're just enhancing it. They're just, they want it all there. They want it all presented. Um, so they can send their little messages and so they can openly do their Baal worship. And uh, now they have a hymn, Olympic hymn, to Zeus or uh, to Baal. So they start off, they kick everything off with a nice little hymn to Baal. And uh, the words to the hymn, now they have different words when they sing it, I guess, in English, but these are the actual translated, this is the English translation of the words to the hymn. I don't know why they have two different versions. They're basically the same anyway. But here's the hymn. Immortal spirit of antiquity. Oh, this, by the way, this hymn is to Zeus. Nobody argues about that. That's what it's, under, it's understood. Immortal spirit of antiquity, father of the true, beautiful and good. Descend, appear, shed over us thy light upon this ground and under this sky, which has first witnessed thy unperishable fame. Give life and animation to those noble games. Throw wreaths of fadeless flowers to the victors in the race and in strife. Create in our breasts hearts of steel. Shine in a rosette hue and form a vast temple to which all nations throng and adore thee, O immortal spirit of antiquity. What a bunch of wicked satanic garbage. In the name of Jesus Christ, it's damned, it's accursed. Uh, create in our breasts hearts of steel. You know what the Bible says about that? Harden their hearts. Those who harden their hearts, they're wicked. They're bound for hell. They won't humble themselves. They're prideful. Anyway, um, could go on and on about the hymn, but no need. <laughs> okay. Now, the Olympic flame, we talked a little about how, what it represents. The funny thing about the, tr the flame, they light the flame, they get the virgins, and they come in, they act out this whole thing with the priestess and the, this whole little witch's coven here. And they, they light the flame with the mirror, and um, then they go and they put it in the torch. And then they do this whole thing where, this famous thing where they take the torch and they do a relay and they take, go with the torch. Interesting thing about that is, that's not part of the ancient ritual. That's pretty new. And you might have heard the person that had the idea to do the relay, um, his name was uh, uh, Hitler. Right, yeah, Adolf Hitler. He, uh, he had that idea. And... Um, they ran with it, you could say. A little joke, I'm sorry. But yeah, Hitler started that. It's just, they, they love it. They, just, they say it transcends Hitler and everything, so they just continue on the tradition, even though it was started by Hitler. Okay, whatever. Ich verkünde die Spiele von Berlin. Zur Feier der ersten Olympiade neuer Zeitrechnung als eröffnet. It's in many ways it's a Pretty basic, primitive human thing. This is a Neolithic ritual we're looking at here. Yeah. I thought it was invented in 1936 for the Hitler Olympics. It was an embarrassing fact that we don't we, we like to we like to conceal, but that's absolutely true. It was all the kind of uh, mainly Riefenstahl. Uh, um, that's right. The, the symbolism and, and the Olympic uh, guys have kept it going.
Then we have the closing ceremonies. All the athletes come back together as one from all the nations and they join together while they have this big wicked bail fest with all the rock and roll and this satanic imagery bouncing off the walls wherever you look. So everyone's just in your face, you know. Ritual time. I mean, it's like off the chart now. The past 10 years, it's been ridiculous. It's sickening. I mean, the big one I remember is the, the phoenix rising up out of the flames while these people are beating on these drums and chanting, and it was crazy. And it's just, that's a typical Masonic, um, evil, wicked, pagan symbol of the phoenix rising out, order out of chaos. That's all about the new world order, and that's what these people are bringing about. why I wanted to talk about the history of it is you kind of see like none this stuff is not new you know all this occult stuff oh wow the Olympics are getting really bad the Grammys are getting really bad this year no they've always been like that they've always been like that it might be a little more blatant and easier to pick up on but not so much I mean they've always been doing that I mean you know you had Hitler you had the Olympics in Germany where he promoted these five rings like crazy. Before that, the symbol with the five rings wasn't doing very much, but he loved that symbol. He was so into propaganda. He took that symbol and used it with the swastika. That's an occult symbol. You have this stuff all over the place, all throughout, all the way going all the way back to the ancient games, just even to what they're actually doing. I mean, they're running around naked, doing all their feats of strength, and they're having orgies in the Olympic Village. Uh, these accounts make the Olympic Village sound more like Peyton Place or ancient Rome during one of its more rambunctious periods. Some athletes have even reportedly appropriated the motto of Las Vegas, what happens in the village stays in the village. The beautiful and buff gold medalist Hope Solo says there were a few key moments at the 2008 Olympics that were not solo at all. Solo is just one of many athletes now spilling stories to ESPN about the Olympic Village, a place where reportedly officials regularly stock 100,000 condoms. And that's all part of the satanic ritual too, is, is sexual sin, fornication. That's always there when you have um, these rituals going on. That's definitely not hidden in this festival. I mean, it's in the mainstream news, is constantly talking about it, how much fornication is going on at this place. It's not even hidden at all. I mean, that's, that's, that's a fact. Um, I'm just bringing that up because it's happening. It's part of this, the spirit that's over this event is Baal worship. And that's what you have. You have just this widespread occult spiritual darkness and um, their intent is to bring it out into the forefront and indoctrinate the youth and indoctrinate the world to that this is the one world way this is this is how we're going to unite through all this all these weird occult means the flame is an ancient symbol of peace and harmony a symbol of the power of humanity to come together despite our differences. This is the 80th anniversary of the torch relay. The first one took place ahead of the 1936 Olympic Games held in Berlin. Nothing about the Lord Jesus Christ or repent and believe the gospel and be saved and be converted and be made a new creature and have your sins forgiven. Paul was in Athens. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive 
that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Forasmuch then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. In the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. And of course he is preaching to them Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the gospel. And some believed, praise God. Um, no mention of that at these games. Um, but I just wanted to warn um, about the pagan origins of the Olympics. And, you know, it's just, it's not even hidden how it was brought back into the modern arena um, through the Jesuits, through the Pope, through the Catholic Church, and also just the this humanistic Olympism, um, pagan religion, basically, and how it's tied in with Baal. It's worth knowing about. Be warned, you know, if you're going to participate and watch this ceremonies and everything, you're participating in their rituals. Um, so you should be prayed up if you're a born-again Christian. If you're not, you should repent and believe the gospel. And... You know, all these athletes, they're either going to die young or they're going to get old and they're going to die. And none of this is going to matter. None of what they accomplish, none of their medals or any of these little accolades or any of the things that these people accomplished in the uh, 1936 Olympics matters right now. What matters now is where is their soul? Where is your soul going to be if you're not saved? You need to ask yourself that. Where is your soul going to be? when you stand before the judge and um, you know all of these little games will not profit anything 1st Timothy 4 8 for bodily exercise profiteth little but godliness is profitable unto all things having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come it's just a warning so I'll be praying for those who watch. Thank you for watching. Time for the I trust to go.